Hi everyone and welcome to Tuesday's Tips with Laurie. We're just starting again because we wanted you to be able to get the full and be able to see everything that we are trying to do today. So today we are going to show how to cut SVG files and I'm going to start do it from start to finish. I'm not doing a part one and part two of how to do it. I'm just doing a part one on different types of cutting machines and next week we're going to cover a different set of cutting machines. That way we're covering everything because I know there's some differences and we'd like to show some tips and maybe some fun things on those differences. So starting, uh, starting out with, today we'll be on a Cameo, a Silhouette Cameo, and it may not be the exact same version of software that you got, so there may be a few slight differences, but that's okay. You guys can uh, maybe grab your manuals if you need to find, uh, but I'll just show you the basic steps of how you would go about doing this. Um, the other thing is Cricut. If you're cutting on a Cricut, it does take our SVG files, but it doesn't keep them in the native size that we would normally have you cut them out in. And so all you do is you go to our SVG file information file, you'll get those sizes and then you can just enter them in and it scales up for you. So if you've got any of our older designs that don't have that SVG file cuts, please email us we'll be happy to get those to you, no problem. Also, if it, it's something that we're updating frequently as well, but if it's something that you've found, oh, I'm, I've got my Cricut machine and it's not here, just email us, we'll be happy to do that for you. All right, so today, um, before we start, does anyone know what SVG stands for? SVG, I had to look it up. But before you look it up, see if you can guess. See how, see how good you are at guessing. So um, SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphing, Graphics, excuse me. So they're taking a graphic and then you can scale it and it's really cool. I think that's SVG, now I know, right? what it stands for. So today I was going to show you basically how to do this cute little strawberry pen cushion and it's on our That's So Chanel Fruit Stand CD. Um, these are really fun designs. One of the reasons I picked the strawberry is because it's got four different fabrics and I'm going to show you how you can cut all four fabrics in one cutting without needing to go into uh, one, cutting just a little leaf, and then doing a second one. You can just do them all in one cut. Um, so it'll be really fast and easy. This is especially great if you're making two or three or four, you know, for gifts. Um, you know where to find me. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Send one to your friends, to your favorite local quilt shops. They would love to know that they're loved and taken care of this winter, this uh, fun season. So anyway, just some fun ideas. Um, for cutting. So to get started, I'm going to just have you zoom over here a little bit to mm -hmm. our screen, the computer. So the first thing you'll do is you'll take your SVG file off of your CD and save it to your USB stick. And once it's saved on your stick, you can take your stick to any of your, uh, com your computer or to your cutting machine. I just like to start with it on a, a stick where it's already pulled up. So I'm going to uh, pull it up right here so it's under my strawberry and these are you can see the SVG files are just right here and so you don't have to open the SVG file yet it won't let you because you don't have the right software pulled up so then we're going to come down here toward the silhouette and I'm going to pull up the silhouette software and once I have the silhouette software pulled up I'm going to come down to my folder and I've already got this pulled up right here on my folder so what I want to do is move it out of the way a little bit and I'm just going to drag and drop. So I'm going to grab my extra small strawberry and I'm going to just drag it up right here to the top. And I just click off to the side and the other screen goes away and then I've got what I need to work with. So to start with, the first thing I want is these are different fabrics, all four of those pieces. So I want to highlight it, there we go. Click on it and highlight it when you see the hand and the whole thing is highlighted. So now I'm gonna ungroup that. So I'm gonna come up here to this ungroup selected shapes and I'm gonna click on it and it's ungrouped them and it's made different boxes. So I'm gonna click off to the side and just choose one. If you can see when I'm not on a line, it's, a, it's an arrow, but when I'm on the line, it's a hand. When it's on the hand is when you can make the box that you can use to drag. So I'm gonna drag this one to the top corner 
and then I'm going to come over here and get this leaf and I'm going to drag it up. Oh, I'm going to drag it. Wait for the hand. My arm is sticking to the mat, sorry. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to take this other leaf and I'm going to bring it to the bottom corner and I'm going to take the strawberry and I'm going to drag it down to here. Now, as you can see, I'm using this full screen or full mat, if you will. It's a 12 by 12 inch mat. And over here on this page setup, you can see that I've chosen the Cameo 12 by 12 inches. You gotta make sure that you've highlighted that. If you haven't, and you've got a different one, for example, oops, I don't wanna select something there. Um, if I go down to the eight by 12 inch mat, can you see my background mat here changed? And it's not gonna cut these bottom two it's not going to cut my leaf for my strawberry because it's got the wrong mat. Um, and I want to make sure that I've selected the 12 by 12 inch mat. And now you can see my red line now is around the outside edge. So that's how I would go about being able to cut these. So the first thing I do is separate them. So now that I have them separated and I have the correct mat chosen, I'm going to just show you a couple differences. So this strawberry, you can see, has the heat and bond. I put heat and bond on the back of all of my fabrics and this is one of the leaves and as you can see I could probably cut a, a dozen leaves out of this one piece and we can cover that next time of how you would cut multiples. Today we're talking about ungrouping but you can see I have the heat and bond and I've left the paper on the back. So it depends whether you're going to put place your fabric right side down or your fabric right side up depending on whether you want the paper already on the back or not on the back. Because if you cut it, I'm going to slide this over, if you cut it with your uh, fabric facing up, once it's done cutting, you'll pull this up and it comes right away from the paper. The reason you would do that is so you don't have to afterwards try to peel that little piece of paper off, which can get difficult. Um, if you don't want to have to worry about that, it comes right off because it's stuck against something and it's easy to pull that fabric off. And I'll show you how that would happen. But if you would prefer to have the paper on the back until you go to uh, attach it to your project, then you will want to cut it with the paper side up. And the reason you would want to cut it with the paper side up and not down is the paper comes up with it easily this way. If it's got the paper side down, the paper doesn't come up as easily with the fabric. It kind of pulls apart. So that would be the difference. And one is gonna be reversed. So if I'm looking at the back, I need to reverse those two pieces that I'm gonna cut here and here. And if I'm looking with the fabric straight up, I don't need to reverse either one of these. So the reason I'm showing you all this in one is I wanna show you the different techniques of whether you would prefer to have a paper or not if you're gonna cut it with your paper side up or your paper side down, however you'd like to do it. But just remember, if it's paper side up, you've gotta reverse those, uh, the pattern. So right here, I'm gonna click on it so it's highlighted over here on the screen. Mm -hmm. And then if you click with your right mouse, you can flip it right here. I'm gonna flip it horizontally and it just reversed it right there for me. You do it one more Very time. Very simple, you bet. So first I highlight it, click my right button, and it pulls up your menu, and I'm just gonna flip it horizontally, and it just flipped it in reverse. So it just reversed the pattern for me right there. So these two now are reversed, because I have them reversed on this mat, and the other two are not reversed, because I'm gonna cut those out forward. So that's basically how I'm gonna do that. Now in this particular software, I'm going to unplug and I'm going to hook my USB cable for my um, mat up. Or my, not my mat, my SVG cutter. And before I send it anywhere, I'm going to load my mat. So you'll put your mat here and once you have this turned on, it'll automatically say, do you want to load your cutting mat? And you hit enter and it will load your cutting mat. You just need to make sure that your pieces have already been pressed down so that they're not going to come off of your mat. If your mat is brand, brand new, they're going to stick really well. You may want to make them a little bit less sticky. 
All right, so once you've got this loaded, I'm gonna come back over here to the Cameo and I'm gonna hit Send. And for this one, I have to hit Send first and then select my cut. And I'm gonna just select the one that says Cut Only. So I need to highlight, whoops, I don't wanna grab it. I wanna highlight what I'm cutting. So I'm gonna drag, basically, it's like a drag and drop so I can highlight all four boxes at the same time and then select cut. When you see a red line around each one of your shapes, you know that it's ready to cut. That's your key that it's gonna cut. I chose cut instead of cut edge because of what I'm working with, I like the fabric. And then over here, I made sure that I selected fabric. You could select cardstock, cork, uh, craft, um, applique glitter sheets, that's where you would select what you're cutting. I selected what I'm going to cut so that the blade is set to the correct um, depth because you want to make sure your blade is at the right depth. Then you just come down here and you can see my. it says that I'm ready and I just hit send and then it cuts and it's kind of noisy. <laughs> But as you can see, it's gonna cut in the small corners because that's where I placed it. And we could cut several different strawberries and leaves. stick this one down very good, did I? So I just hit unload, it comes out. And so I'm gonna show you when you peel this one off, cause it's stuck, I tried to stick them down pretty good. Your fabric's gonna stick a little bit to your mat. And that didn't quite cut through in that one spot right there. And so you can see that the paper then is attached still to your fabric in the back. And there's a little hair or a little hair, there's a little piece of fabric stuck right there. All right. So that is your leaf and you can cut several leaves and the paper still has, is attached to the back. And then I'm gonna slide this over, is that easier to see? We're good. And then on your strawberry, for example, here's your strawberry. Can you see how I peel off just the strawberry itself? Comes right off and the paper backing is stuck there and look how easy that uh, paper backing i don't have to worry about peeling that off later now so it's all ready to go right ready for the project uh, let's see where i cut this leaf is right up here and then there again your leaf comes off and your paper stays so it depends on if you're wanting to cut it this way you can go and take your paper off but it's just stuck a lot better so this is why I would recommend if you want the paper on the back of your item still, then I would do it so the paper sides up if you are great with it, um, not having to worry about taking the paper off later, then that's when I would leave the fabric side up with the paper side down. And if your mat is getting really unsticky, like it's losing its tack, I would look in your uh, mat, owner's manual for your mat and for care of your mat because there's uh, you can wash it off and you can reuse it several times. Oh, that's a great uh, tip. So definitely, the, what we do here is we take a grocery bag, a plastic grocery bag, and some warm water. We just run it under warm water and we just use circular motion and it cleans it right off. It cleans all the extra lint off. But if it's too tacky to start with and you can't peel anything off of it, that's when you would use some lots of pieces of fabric and just put them down and just get a little bit of that. You could just go like that and it takes some of that tacky off so it's not sticking so bad that you can't peel anything off. Because a brand new mat, it's, it's a little bit tricky. So if you're brand new at this and you've got a brand new mat or you've got your uh, silhouette for Christmas last year and you're just pulling it out, which happens, um, make sure that you, if it's too tacky, just practice or test you can stick some paper on it. If you can't peel that paper off, then you wanna make sure that you get some tacky or, or some fabric lint, if you will, off of the fabric, and it will make it so it's still tacky. You can see it's still tacky, but not so tacky that you can't pull your project off when you need to. And that's about that for this week. 
Next week, we'll talk a little more about multiples and making multiples, and also how to ungroup and take things apart on the Brothers Scan and Cut. And we'll talk a little bit about the Sizzix as well. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful, and I hope that you'll get lots of fun projects made with your cutting machine this year. Thanks so much, and we'll join, you next, or join us next week for Tuesday's Tips.